All right, folks. Let's move on to greatest common factor with variables. And as always, when we add variables onto something, it kind of feels like, oh man, this could be harder at first, but then it never really is. The numbers are really harder than the variables. Let's do some examples here. Okay, so let's say I have 10 x to the third power and 50 x. Okay, now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to deal with the numbers. Okay, so what's the greatest common factor of 10 and 50? And right away, when I have a number that's one number that's way smaller than the other, I like to right away say, okay, can I multiply 10 and get 50? Yeah, I can. So like 10 is a factor of 50 and the greatest factor of 10 is 10. So right away, I know that the greatest common factor is going to be 10. Okay. Now what about the variables? So over here, this is X times X times X, right? And over here, this is X. So hmm, what factors do they have in common? Well, they have this X in common. Do they have anything else in common? No, because yeah, there's more factors over here, but there's not more factors over here. So there's nothing else that they share that they have in common. So the only variable they have in common is just one X. So I'm just gonna pop that next to the 10. That's the answer. Okay, so you can see, as always, the variables aren't really um, harder than the numbers. Let's take a look at one that's like super tricky. And this is pretty much as tricky as it gets for now. Okay. Okay, let's start with the 12 and the 42. This one's not as easy as the 10 and the 50. Because what are the, what's the greatest common factor of 12 and 42? Because 12 doesn't multiply to get 42, so it's not that. So let's just go ahead and, like sometimes we just have to go back to kind of listing, right? So for 12, like one, one times 12, two times six, three times four. And what I like to do, right, to cheat, so I don't have to list all the factors of 42, there's really, like there's not too many, right? There's one times 42, there's two times 21, what is it, three times 14, and six times seven. Now what I could do to get away with not listing these factors is I could start at 12 and say, okay, can I multiply 12 to get 42? No. Can I multiply six to get 42? Oh yeah, I can. There it is, right? So I actually didn't have to list all the factors here. I could have kind of cheated and just started at the largest and then found you know, the first one as I move up the line that's shared, that's common. Okay, so here the greatest common factor is six. Now let's look at the variables. And you're gonna notice I like to list them out. So here I have n times n times p times p times p. And over here I have n times n times n times n times p. Okay, so what do they have in common? Well, they have this one n in common. And they have, oh, they have another n in common. Look, there's another n over here, there's another n over here. Do they have another n in common? No, there's, there is another n over here, but there's no other n over here. So they don't share another n. But over here, look, they do have a p in common. Like there's a p right here and there's a p right here. And do they have any other p's in common? No, there is more p's over here, but there's no more p's over here. So what do they have in common is two n's, n times n, and one p. Okay, so you can see with the numbers, I did it the same. With the variables, I like to just list them out. Sometimes you get one that's like a little bit, like this one, maybe I wouldn't need to list out. But over here, I like to do it because I feel like it really prevents mistakes. Okay, so let's set up your practice problems. You're gonna do 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay, you're gonna try this five times. <laughs> 